Price, the uh, chair of the Southern Cross Care Board. Um, Francis joined uh, Southern Cross Care Board in 2012 and became its chair in December of 2020. He holds an associate diploma in civil engineering, a Bachelor of Business, a Master of Business Administration, and is a graduate of the Australian Institute of Company Directors. Francis started his career as an engineer, worked in sales and marketing, and has been running his own asset management consultancy firm for more than 30 years. His work supports many large national enterprises, but his heart is in country Queensland, where he was born and raised. Uh, people may know this, because we say it all the time, but Francis and I both grew up in Dolby. He was one year ahead of me at school, I think. So uh, we're part of that so cohort of people who grew up in Western Queensland, and, uh, and we're proud of it. This fuels his commitment to helping people age in place and goes some way to explain why he is passionate about our vision and mission. I'd like to invite Francis to come to the stage. So you're incredibly fortunate to have two St Mary's old boys here. Um, St Mary's is a school that doesn't exist anymore, so we can always uh, claim all the best people that were ever there and will ever be there. Uh, I'd, start, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we celebrate the Turrbal and Yagara people. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the areas on all the areas we have sites, acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging. I'd like to uh, welcome Father Dan Ryan here, who's representing the Archbishop, um, and also all of the interstate visitors who are here this evening. Um, I'd like to make an admission that uh, I've probably put a bit of a jinx on because I wrote this a few days ago, and I wasn't going to acknowledge Bishop uh, Kevnell, who's not here. <laughs> I was going to acknowledge Deputy Supreme Knight Vince Gernahan, who's not here. I was going to acknowledge President Eddie Redke, your current uh, State Chair, Eddie Redke, who's not here. Um, but Michael, I have got your name and you are here, so that's a great thing. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge all of the uh, past and current office holders of the Knights of the Southern Cross, and also past and current office holders of Southern Cross Care Queensland. My role this evening is to introduce our book for hosting our first 40 years. Um, I'd like you to you could pick it up and put it down, and pick it up and put it down, and do great things for your arm strength. So Mother Teresa of Calcutta said, we cannot do all things great, but we can do small things with great love. It's easy to look at something that is and believe we should be satisfied. What's represented on the pages of this book is not satisfaction. It's a commitment that uh, what comes next. Today we're represented by an organisation that we anticipate will turn over $100 million a year. But people should not judge what we do on that. It's the commitment and struggle, not the context of money, that make what, us what, uh, what we do important. This is a missionary work touched tens of thousands of people. The people who have guided the organisation, the people who have worked in the organisation, but most importantly, the people that we've cared for. Although I didn't know it, my first exposure to Southern Cross Care was when I was a teenager. My father was a, a night, although I didn't, didn't really know it. We were down here and he drove over to the side of Holland Park when it was still a plan on a map. I didn't have any context for it when I drove over, but what this book does is provide context. What we take from that context is up to each of us. It's probably a fair assessment to say that Holland Park has been associated with the name Archbishop Dewey, and it's the spiritual home of Southern Cross Care Queensland. My question after reading the book is, why Dewey? The site was purchased by Archbishop Dewey from the Commonwealth Government it was the site of a hospital during the Second World War. You may ask why he bought it. Well, that's probably because he bought all the hills by then and it was probably the only thing left. <laughs> uh, but it's not Archbishop Dewey who was instrumental in supporting the Knights in the establishment of Dewey. 
That happened in the stewardship of Archbishop Rush. But in my view, in reading the book, it's not Archbishop Rush we should pay homage to, it's Bishop Gary. He was the one who supported the allocation of land to Southern Cross Care as a lease so they could build the facility. And if the demonstration of sainthood is the ability to identify miracles, then I think Bishop Gary is a saint. It may have been good to allocate a lease, but to convince the church to sell us the land at Holland Park and also sell us the land at Ipswich is a miracle. We have now uh, in excess of 2,500 people across 13 facilities, aged care facilities, five villages and multiple homes. The fact that we do this is because of the efforts of those that have guided our journey to an ever-changing environment. Their story is reflected on these pages. The chairs who have led the organisation through our existence have been Justice James Gibney, a district court judge, Kevin O'Neill, a hospital administrator, Aidan Smith, a tax man, uh, Martin Sheehan, who was a World War II and Vietnam veteran, Alf Rowan, who was a wine merchant, Don Neander, who followed the profession of Jesus. Um, through their time, they've created what we have today. And it's not just them, it is those that have served on committees and boards, the sacrifices of their families, and the multitude of other members of the organisation. The business of the organisation is led by executives and CEOs, including uh, Eddie Edward Goff, Steve Kelly, Kevin Duffy, Graham Fuller, Roderick Rod Mills, Wayne Gilbert, Lorraine Gar Gar Garland, Peter Bell, who's here with us tonight, Michael Bowers, um, briefly in my time, we've also had Nick Ryan and Damien Finger, as well as Jason, who's our current CEO. An ongoing challenge for Southern Cross Care has been how we demonstrate our mission and Catholic ethos. As the chair of Southern Cross Broken Hill said, if we don't do it different than anyone else, then why are we bothering to do it? The term valuing and respecting human life was coined by Terry Bennett. I was fortunate to serve on the board with Terry and I saw how he projected his knowledge and love in thoughts and decisions. One of my great disappointments is how the current Queensland politicians have sought to force us to compromise our mission and Catholic ethos through the introduction of VLAD legislation. Queensland has a Human Rights Act, and when it was introduced, the Honourable Abed Dar said, the primary aim of the legislation is to ensure that respect for human rights is embedded in the culture of the public sector, and the public functions are exercised in a principled way that is compatible to human rights. The legislation has a clause that says, every person has the right to freedom of thought, conscious religion and belief including the freedom to have or adopt a religious belief of a person's choice and the freedom to demonstrate the person's religious uh, belief in worship, observance, practice and teaching, either individually or as part of a community, in public or in private. A person not, must not be coerced or restrained in a way that limits the person's freedom to have or adopt religion as a belief. If you compare that to what happened in the Vlad legislation, Queensland, since it's passed the human rights legislation, requires every bit of legislation to be assessed against that. In the Vlad legislation, it says, for patients enduring intolerable suffering who wish to have assisted dying, the belief or moral doubts of a third person is not the main point. If we are serious about protecting autonomy, we have uh, to accept autonomous individuals have different views on what makes their lives worth living. A balance must be struck between the right to freedom of conscience and religion of some health practitioners on the one hand, and the right to patients of autonomy, dignity, and access to health services on the other. The Voluntary Assisted Dying Bill 2021 weighs up these principles in a way that is designed to maximise the enjoyment of human rights. However, in doing so, the bill does engage or limit a number of human rights. The Honourable Yvette Darth, who made the speech introducing the Human Rights Bill, is the signatory to that statement. 
It seems that human rights and respect are embedded in the culture only to the extent that they are convenient or otherwise they are limited. What has been clear from the earliest days of Southern Cross Care Queensland is the constant challenge of how to engage with government through changing legislation and funding. Never before has this challenge confronted our basic, basic beliefs and mission. We, like those before us, must discern how to follow our mission and continue to serve. What's represented in the book is a foundation, strong, deep, and broad. It has positioned us to make choices about uh, that mean we can serve people in different locations, in different ways, but always from the same underlying motivation. I introduce it to you and welcome you to read it for context and develop your own perspective. What Southern Cross Queer Queensland is today is not what was envisaged as a great thing. It is the result of a lot of small things done with love and reflected on the page of this book. Our challenge is not to be satisfied with the legacy of what others have done with love, but to continue to do these small things and demonstrate great love. Thank you.